Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we let him in. Christ is risen. Truly, he is risen. We begin the gospel passage today from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14. In the first verse, our Lord tells us, Let not your heart be troubled. As I was preparing for this sermon, I came across an interesting uh, saying. Man is a wanting animal. Man is a wanting animal. There is no end to the number of things he or she wants. Modern advertising creates in us a, a, a feverish desire for more and more things. We're made to feel that our happiness will never be complete unless we possess the very latest model of the thing, whatever, whatever that thing is that we want. A well-known author once said, we are like children with our houses strewn with half-read books and half-played games and half-eaten fruit who stand at the doorway crying out into the open world for more instead of using and appreciating what we already have. We are troubled and anxious about many things. And yet, never finding contentment and peace and the satisfaction that we seek. And what does our Lord say to all this? Well, it makes me think of what he said to Martha in Luke chapter 10. He turns to Martha and he says, one thing is needful. One thing is what we need. That's it. He calls on us to simplify life, to withdraw from the distractions in order to concentrate on the one thing that's important, the one thing. I came across a nice illustration in preparing. The, the author once said, every airline ticket counter is equipped with scales. And the scales are there to weigh the baggage that each passenger takes along their trip. And each passenger's baggage is not allowed to exceed a certain limit. So if a passenger exceeds this, we either have to pay extra or they have to find a, a creative way to, to move the, the, the luggage. Wise passengers go over their, pa their baggage frequently and take out the gear that contributes to excess weight. And so our Lord tells us to get rid of the extra baggage. The, the baggage that causes us to be troubled and anxious, to simplify life, reduce it, he says, to the one thing that's needful. So what is the one thing that's needful? As we read from the epistles of St. Paul, we see over and over the phrase that he uses, one thing. He says that I may know Christ. The one thing is that I may know Christ. Everything else is trash. Nothing but Christ has value. Nothing but Christ will endure forever. He is the great treasure, the pearl of a great price. In him reside all treasure, all wisdom, all knowledge. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. To believe in him is to have eternal life and forgiveness and peace and joy and meaning the secret to simplicity is to have Christ as the one dominant purpose in life. To pursue the will of Christ and his plan for our lives is above all else the one thing that's needed. To lay aside all excuses, all rationalizations, to be single-mindedly focused on Christ and to follow him is the one thing that's needful. To love our Lord Jesus Christ with all of our hearts, with all of our minds and our souls and our strength and our neighbor as oneself is the one thing that's needful. We can make our, our Christ as our controlling principle. When we make him our dominant purpose, he controls our instincts and our fears and our anxieties that are within us. But the flip side is true also. When we deny Christ, then the instincts and the drives that come to the surface are uncontrolled and they wreak chaos. When Christ is the controlling principle in our lives, all anxiety, all fears are held in control. They may not disappear. That's not what the gospel preaches. 
They might not vanish, but they are controlled in the hands of Christ. There is a Christ-controlled life. There is order. There is unity. There's purpose. There's peace. There's simplicity. He who chooses Christ as his one dominant goal in life no longer is troubled and anxious about many things. He has removed distractions. He has a simplified life. He has chosen the one thing that's needful. Let's, let's transition. Our Lord says later on um, that at the completion of his mission, that he would return to his father. And St. Thomas turned to him and asked, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? St. Thomas failed to recognize, as many have failed since, that the way was standing right in front of him. No longer could man be guided by a cloud in the daytime and a pillar of fire at nighttime, and as in the days of, no of Moses. Our guide would no longer be a sign in the skies, but a person. A person thoroughly acquainted with our human, with our human situation. A person who would stand by our side constantly. The person is a the way is a is a person. A person we can know, a person we can love, a person we can address in prayer, a person that we can follow, a person that we can establish a warm personal relationship with. The only person in human history that said, I am the way. In Christ, we see the way. We see the way of God's coming to us. We see the way of our going to God. We see the way out of our sin. We see the way of peace. We see the way out of confusion. We see the way of truth. The way to suffer. The way to pray. The way of joy. The way to treat our enemies and our friends. The way to love, the way to forgive, the way to live, the way to die, the way to heaven. This is why Christianity was first known as the way. And Christian followers were, were known as followers of the way. There are those who tell us today that there is no such thing as a way to life. They believe that life is meaningless, unfortunately. That there's no rhyme or reason to the things that are happening. That we're simply dust. We're simply trapped here. There's nothing that we care about. There's nothing we can do about it. There's no way out. And so we better kind of get used to it. We better just face it. And I can't help to think of the thief on the right hand side. He was on the cross being punished for his sins. He was at the end of his rope. The end of his life. There was no way out for him. Until he turned to Christ with a plea of faith. And he said a plea of forgiveness. And suddenly he found the way. He found the way out of sin. He found the way to forgiveness and peace. He found the way out of death to life. He, our Lord said today, you will, shall, you will be with me in paradise. Let's contemplate on others who found the way. There's, there's Zacchaeus. He was a dishonest tax collector. He cheated people from taking more from them um, than he should that they should have paid. And one day Zacchaeus had climbed a tree to be able to see Christ when he came by. He was up a tree in more ways than one, and he was hated by his people absolutely. And he actually hated himself for what he was doing. And when our Lord looked at him, he said, Zacchaeus, come down today. I must stay at your house. Zacchaeus replied, Lord, I shall give half my goods to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone, I will return it fourfold. Our Lord met Zacchaeus that day and became for him the way to a new life. Think of the demon-possessed man, the one who, when Christ asked him his name, he replied the name Legion, meaning many. He was many different persons living in oneself. There was a civil war happening, conflicting inside of him. And the gospel tell us that our Lord made him whole. He restored him to the self that he truly was. Our Lord 
became for this man the way, the way to wholeness, the way to an integrated personality and the way to peace within himself. Think of the woman who was sick for 12 years. When, when the woman was sick for 12 years and she couldn't find healing anywhere. And, but she believed in Christ. She believed that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, of his robe, that she would be healed. So great was her faith. And one day she touched the hem of the robe of Christ. And immediately she felt power surge through her body. And she was made well. This suffering woman found in Christ the way. The way to heal. Think of the adulterous woman who was about to be stoned to death for her sin. Our Lord came by and said to those who were about to cast the stones, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. And then, turning to the embarrassed woman, he said, neither do I condemn you. Sin no more. Our Lord became to this woman the way, the way to forgiveness, the way of dignity, the way of self-respect, the way to a new life. Our Lord becomes the way for all these people and he can, he can become the way for us. The way a man follows to reach the destination is important. It matters. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, it says, there is a way which seems right to a man, but his end is the way of death. There are many ways that man can follow God in life. Some lead somewhere, others lead nowhere. A life without Christ is full of dead ends. There's, there's roads that lead to nowhere. Mankind has always been searching for the way. Some have chosen the way of secularism saying, we don't need God. We have everything we need to make us happy. We are entirely self-sufficient. We have found the way in ourselves. And sometimes we fall into this trap. We say things like, we don't need God. We might not explicitly say those words, but our actions speak louder than our words. But does this way make people happy? No. It makes people who are empty. This formula creates people who are empty. People who are hollow. People who are searching and never find peace because the way that they found is not the way. It's a dead end street. There is a way out of our confusion. There is a way out of our moral sicknesses. There is a way out of our spiritual emptiness. There is a way out of our anxieties and our troubles. That's why our Lord says in the beginning of the gospel today, let not your heart be troubled. That way is Christ. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am life. He can bring us the joy and the reason for living that we are seeking. Christ is the only way. In Acts chapter 4 verse 12 it says, Nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men which, by which we must be saved. There is no other name that we're saved. There are those who refuse to believe that Christ is the sole means of salvation. Many seek for truth and life through other means, but our Lord is the only way. He alone is the way. But that way is available for all who come to him in faith and repentance. He is not merely a way, one way, or even the best way. He is the way. He is not some truth, partial truth, or adequate truth. He is the truth. He is not mere life, or good life, or beneficial life. He is the life. And Christ is risen, truly he is risen, and glory be to God forever. Amen.